In this video, we'll talk about what using the wrong basis looks like. And of course, there is no such thing as a bad basis. All bases are created equal. Until that is, you're working on a specific problem. And a specific problem will dictate its own choice of basis. With respect to a particular problem, some bases are better than others. And some are just plain bad. So what basis did I choose to represent all bad bases in the world for a particular problem? Well, of course, the Cartesian basis. Probably everybody's favorite. It's the basis that's used 99% of the time, and it's probably the wrong basis to use for 90% of the problems. Maybe I'm exaggerating, I'm hoping I'm exaggerating, but I'm just trying to make a point, and I'm trying to get you to think about bases and choice of bases and how bases relate to the problem you're trying to solve in a very specific and clear way. So that's the point I'm trying to make here. All right, so we're going to work with this basis. We're still working with reflection as our linear transformation. And we will now compute the matrix that represents the reflection with respect to this Cartesian basis denoted by the letter C. And we'll actually do it twice. First, we'll do it as engineers when we just approximate the numbers. And then we'll do it slightly more generally as an applied mathematician would. All right, so let's first go ahead and do it as engineers, just to sort of begin to get an idea of what's going on. So the strategy is, of course, the same. The strategy is completely uh, general, which is to express the image of each of the basis vectors under the linear transformation with respect to the same basis. So let's go ahead and do it. That's the step that involves construction. This matrix, once again, is constructed by performing the linear transformation directly on each one of the basis elements. And that's how this matrix is able to absorb all there is to know about the linear transformation. So let's go ahead and implement the strategy. And of course, we must apply the linear transformation to E1, resulting in this vector right here. Let's just be careful. Go the same distance the other way at the right angle. So here is T of E1. And now our task is to decompose T of E1 with respect to this basis. And this basis being nice and Cartesian, it's certainly nice for the point of view of eyeball decomposition. So I think that it's about 0.9 Ah, uh, well, help me here. 0.9 and 0.6, something like that. 0.9 and 0.6. So there you go. 0.9 and 0.6. Of course, the sums of squares of these two numbers need to add up to 1, and they don't, but that's okay. We're just trying to make a rough point here. All right, so right away you see that, number one, this process was a little bit more laborious than what we had to do for other bases. And then, of course, the numbers aren't nearly as pretty. Let's do the same thing for the second basis element. Let me just be careful here. Here is going to the line of the reflection and going the same distance the other way. So here is T of E2. T of E2. And now we have to decompose T of E2 with respect to the same basis, and I'm seeing, you know, 0.6 and then maybe negative 0.8. Would you buy that? So it's 0.6 with respect to E1 and negative 0.8 with respect to E2. So 0 0.6, 0 0.6, negative 0.8. All right, I'm kind of pleased with this pair of numbers because the squares of these two numbers do add up to one. So in some ways, this is a little bit more, what's the word, consistent or true than the first column. So there you go, this, the mission's accomplished. We have represented this uh, linear transformation with respect to this basis. Now, of course, these numbers are approximate. So you can see that the trace is not zero, even though it should be because that's the sum of the eigenvalues. So no matter what the choice of basis is, we would expect a zero trace, but it's approximately zero. So we should be pleased with this effort, but we should also notice that these numbers 
are not nearly as nice as the numbers for custom-made bases for this transformation. All right, let's now do a slightly more, let's now implement a slightly more general approach and solve this problem as applied mathematicians would. And I think some ways will be a little bit more satisfying, some things a little bit less satisfying. So here's what an applied mathematician would do. He would denote, uh, let's see, use a different color chalk. He would denote, well, let's see, this was the original angle between the straight line and the horizontal direction. So we can call this angle alpha. And of course, this angle would also be alpha. And this combined angle would be two alpha. So the components of T of E1 with respect to E1 and E2 are actually cosine of two alpha and sine of two alpha. So let's write that down. It's a little bit more general. So cosine of two alpha and sine of two alpha. Okay, and then for the other one, so if this is, if this angle is two alpha, then this angle right here is pi over two minus two alpha. All right, so then this angle is pi over two minus two alpha. Then, is that correct? No, this combined one, this angle. All right, so that's right. This angle is pi over two minus two alpha. So this angle right here is pi over two minus, hold on. No, I was right the first time. It's this angle that's pi over two minus two alpha. This combined angle is pi over two minus alpha, as you can see from the picture. So this angle right here, the angle that we need in order to decompose T over two is pi over two minus two alpha. So our components are cosine of pi over two minus two alpha, which is the same thing as sine of two alpha, sine of two alpha. And the other component would be minus sine of this angle. In other words, minus cosine of two alpha. So minus cosine of two alpha. So that's the matrix. Okay, and this maybe is a little bit more satisfying than this attempt because it's a little bit more general and we can see very clearly that the trace is zero and that the determinant is this squared minus this squared minus this squared, which will be actually be minus one. So there's something very nice and consistent about this matrix. So I do prefer this approach to this approach, but both approaches were quite a little bit of work. And certainly if you compare this basis to the basis that we considered before, right, this was a lot more work and the resulting matrices are not as nice. So they're not too bad. But if I asked you to honestly admit of all the bases we considered, would you choose one of the previous bases or this one, which one would you choose? So you don't have to answer that question.